was a nice summer day. My five-year-old son James was playing outside in the backyard of our suburban home. James has always been a quiet boy. He plays by himself mostly. He never had many friends, maybe five, six. But he has always had a wild imagination. I was in the kitchen, feeding our dog Fido, when I heard what sounded like James talking to someone in the backyard. I'm not sure who it was he could be talking to, but he had finally made a friend, being a single dad, and it's hard for me to always keep an eye on my son, so I decided to go outside and check on him. When I went to the backyard, I was a bit confused because James was the only person back there. Was he talking to himself? I could have sworn I heard a, another voice. James, it's time to come inside, I called out. He came inside and sat down at the kitchen table. It was about lunchtime, so I decided to make him a turkey sandwich. James, who are you talking to? Out there, I asked. James looked up for a moment. I, I was playing with my new friend. He said, smiling. I poured him some milk. He continued to pry. And then he could fall the wood. Does your friend have a name? Why didn't you ask him to have lunch with us? I asked. James stared at me for a moment. Before replying, his, his name is Laughing Jack. I was a bit taken. I was a bit taken back by what he had said. Oh, that's a strange name. What does your friend look like? I asked a bit confused. He's a clown. He has long hair and a big swirly cone nose. He's got... Long arms and baggy pants with stripy socks, and he always smiled. I realized my son was talking about an imaginary friend. I suppose it is normal for kids his age to have imaginary friends, especially when he has no real kids to play with. It's probably just a phase. <clears throat> Guess um, the rest of the day went by as per usual, and it was starting to get late, so I get, so I get. James to bed and tucked him in. I made sure to turn on his light light night light before I closed the door. I was pretty tired myself, so I decided to go to bed. Not long after, I had an awful dream. It was dark. I was in some kind of rundown amusement park. I was scared, running through an endless field of empty tents, broken down roads, and abandoned game huts. The whole place had a horrible look to it. Everything was black and white. The prize stuffed animals, all hung from nooses in the game huts, all with sick grains stitched on their faces. It felt like the whole park was looking at me, even though there wasn't another living thing in sight. Then suddenly I began to hear music. Play. The sound of pop goes the weasel being played on a squeeze box echo. Squeeze box echoed through the park. It was hypnotizing. I followed its tune to the circus, turned almost in a trance. Unable to stop my legs from moving forward. It was a pitch black. The only light came from a single spotlight shining on the centre of the big top. As I walked towards the light, the music slowed down. I found myself singing along and able to stop. All around the mobile we pushed the beat. Monkey chased the weasel. Monkey thought it was all in fun. Pop goes the weasel. The music stopped right before its climax, and suddenly the light shut on. The intensity of the lights was practically blinding. All I could see was a small dark silhouette shuffle towards me. Then another one appeared, and, and another, and another. There were dozens of them, all coming towards me. I couldn't move. I couldn't move my legs. I was frozen. All I could do was much was watch as the haunting figures drew nearer. As they got closer, I could see there were children. As I looked at each one, I noticed they were all horribly disfigured and mutilated. Some had cuts all over the bodies. Others were severely burnt, and others were missing limbs, even eyes. The children enveloped me gnawing at my flesh, dragging me to the ground and tearing me inside. As the children tore me apart, I faded away. All I could hear was laughter, horrible
terrible, awful, evil laughter. I woke up the next morning in a cold sweat. After taking a few deep breaths, I looked over and saw that a few of Jane's action figures were positioned, facing me on top of my nightstand. I sighed. James had probably going for a phase. And had woken up early and put these there. Here, I gathered up the toys and made my way to James's room. However, when I opened the door, James was sound asleep. I just shrugged him and placed the door and toys back into his toy box and headed out to the living room. A little while later, James woke up and I made him breakfast. He was quiet, quiet, and seemed a bit groggy. Perhaps he didn't sleep well any other. I decided to ask him about the toys. James, hon, James, did you put the toys in Daddy's room this morning? His eyes shot up at me for a moment and quickly glanced back down at the cereal. Laughing Jack did it. I rolled up my eyes and responded. Will you tell Laffy Jack to keep the toys in your room? James nodded and finished up his breakfast and decided to go play out in the backyard. I went to relax in the living room. I must have dozed off because I woke up a couple hours later. Oh, fucking shit, I need to check on James. I was a bit worried. It had been over two hours and I haven't checked on him. I went, I went stepped out in the backyard, but James isn't there anymore. I was getting nervous, so I called out to him. James, James, where are you? Just then, I heard a giggle come from the front yard. I rushed through the gates. I ran to the front of the house. James was sitting on the sidewalk. I breathed a start, a sigh of relief. I walked over to him. James, how many times have I told you to stay in the backyard? James, what are you eating? James looked at me, then reached into his pocket and pulled out a handful of hard candies in all colours. It made me very nervous. James, who gave you the candy? James just, James just stared at me, not speaking. James, please tell Father where you got the candies. James hung his head down and said, Nothing, nothing Jack gave it to me. My heart sunk. I kneeled down to him. Look him in the eyes. James, I've had enough of you. This fucking damn laughing Jack thing. He's not real. He's a fucking gay ass punk. Now this is a very serious situation. I need to know who gave you the candy. I could see my son's eyes tear up. But Dada, I mean, but, but Dada, Matthew Jack did give me the candies. I closed my eyes and took a deep breath. James had never lied to me, but what he's telling me is impossible. I made him spit out every part of the candy, and I threw the rest away. James appears to be fine, maybe I'm just overreacting. After all, he could have gotten it from Tom, and Linda from next door, or Mr. Walker down the street, or even Mr. Wanker down the alleyway. Either way, I'm going to have a, to keep a close eye on James. The night I put James to bed, as usual, and decided to go to bed early myself. Suddenly, I was woken up by a loud bang coming from kitchen. I sprang out of bed and hurried down the stairs. When I got to the kitchen I was horrified. Everything on the counters had been thrown on the floor and our dog Fido hung dead from the night fixture. His stomach was cut open and stuffed with the candy in some type that James was eating earlier the day. My shock was quickly broken by a sharp scream coming from James's room. Followed by loud crashes I quickly grabbed the knife from the drawer and moved up stairs with a speed that only a father whose child is in danger could have. I burst through the door and flipped on the lights. Everything in the room was knocked over and tossed on the floor. My poor son is in his bed crying, shaking with fear. A pool of urine staining the sheets. I scooped my child up and ran out of the house and went next door to Tom and Linda's house. Luckily they were still awake. They let me use their phones. When I called the police, it didn't take them long to arrive and I explained what had happened. They looked at me as if I was a crazy psycho. They searched the house, but all they found was a dead dog and two trash rooms. The officer told me that someone had probably gotten into the house, probably Mr. Wanker, and done this right before, making a quick escape. When they heard me coming up the stairs, I knew 
It wasn't true. All the doors were locked, and now the windows were open. Whatever was in the room didn't come from outside. The next day, James stayed inside. I didn't want him to leave my sight. I went to the, into the garage and found his old baby monitor and set it up in his room. If anything comes into his room tonight, I was going to be able to hear it. I went to the kitchen and grabbed the largest knife from a straw like a samurai sword and put it on the nightstand. Imaginary friend or not, I'm not letting anything hurt my little son. Soon enough, night came. I put James to bed. He's afraid, but I promised him what, that I wasn't going to let anything happen to him. I tucked him in and turned on the night light. Before closing the door, I was between good night, James. Bro. Sound. I tried to stay up as long as I could, but after a few hours I felt myself drifting off. My son would be safe for the night, and I needed to sleep just as I lay my head on the pillow. I heard a soft noise come from the baby monitor. I had put on the nightstand. At first it sounded like an interference. Like the kind a radio would make, but it turned into a soft moan. Is James asleep? Then I heard it. The laugh from the... When, from my nightmare. That horrible laugh. I sprung up from the bed. And grabbed the knife. From my pillow. I rushed over to James's room and creaked the door open. I tried the light switch, but it wouldn't come on. I took a step in, and I could feel the warm, thick liquid on my feet. Suddenly, James, his night light came on, and I could see the absolute horror laid out in front of me. James's body was nailed up on the wall, the nails piercing through his hands and feet, his chest was cut open, and his organs hung down to the floor. His eyes and tongue had been removed, along with most of his teeth. I was disgusted. I hardly believe this was my son. I heard it again, the soft, desperate moan. James is still alive. My son. So, my poor son. So much pain, barely clinging to life. I ran across the room. But I was interrupted by a horrible cackle coming from behind me. I spun around. Then out of the shadows emerged the fiend responsible for all this horror. Laughing Jack, his ghost, white skin, and matted black hair hung down to his shoulders. He had piercing white eyes, surrounded by black, dark rings. His twisted smile revealed a row of sharp, jagged teeth. And his skin didn't look like skin at all. It looked like fucking cum. Um, I mean, rubber, plastic. He wore a patchy black and white clown outfit, with strapped sleeves and socks. His body itself was grotesque, his long arms hanging down past his waist, and the way he was poised made him look almost boneless like a rag doll. He let out a sickening laugh, as if to let me know he was pleased with my reaction to his work. He then turned around slowly in front of James, began to laugh even more at the horrific sight he has laid out that was enough to shake me from my terror. I snapped. Get away! F Get away from him, you fucking jipper bastard! I rushed at the monster, raising my knife above my head, and stabbed him. I down at him. But as soon as the knife touched him, he whispered. He disappeared in a cloud of black smoke. The knife passed right through him and pierced James, still beating heart, splashing the warm blood on my beard and face. No! No! What have I done? I've killed my son! I've killed my son! I immediately, immediately fell to my knees, and I could hear sirens in the distance growing louder. My son! My sweet son! I promised Daddy would protect you, but I failed. I'm, s I'm sorry, James. I'm so sorry. Police soon arrived to find me in front of my son, still wielding, wielding the knife covered in my son's blood. The trial was short. Insanity has placed in Propopolis House for the criminally insane, where I have been for the past two months. It's not so bad here. The only reason I'm awake now is because someone is playing Pop Goes the Weasel outside my window. I've talked to the Wardenize about it in the morning. Also, I've seen this horrible puppet called Tilly the Puppet. 
It's hard and monstrous greatest thing. I find out every room. I must speak to them about it. <laughs> <laughs>